Hi, this is Tristan for the University of Advancing Technology doing part two of my texturing tutorial. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to quickly mention um, the way that I set up my textures is that I basically break them down into four separate steps. The first step is base colors, second step is base textures, the third step is wear and tear, and the fourth step is dirt. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna make a new group called colors. Then I'm going to make two layers. One I'm going to call primary color. The other I'm going to call secondary color. Now these could be named differently depending on how many colors you have in your object. I have an image that I based my model off of, which is this image of this, um, this particular news dispenser here. So what's going to make that a little bit easier that way is I'm actually going to sample some colors from it. So if I hit I on the keyboard, it brings up the color sampler, and I can just click somewhere, and I'm gonna fill the entire primary color layer, and then set the ambient occlusion layer to multiply if I hadn't already. Then for the secondary color, I'm going to color pick the kind of grayish black area, and I'm gonna fill that. So my primary color is just on the bottom, so I don't need to do anything about masking that. But I am gonna mask the areas making up the secondary color. And I usually use the polygon lasso or the marquee, but most of the time I'll actually use the polygon lasso because this is the most stable way of getting my sections. So I'm gonna make this area at the top where the um, where the faceplate is, I'm gonna make this black. And so I'm gonna make that selection and then I'm going to add layer mask and that's gonna make that what we see. Um, but that, there's still gonna be a lot more to add. So I'm gonna go in and first of all, I'm gonna add these, um, these joint sections here. I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides. And then I'm going to add this plate on the front, which this is a section where the newspapers, um, where like maybe free newspapers or some kind of um, placard could be placed. So this is one of the reasons that the poly polygon lasso tool is so useful. All right, now that I have already made the layer mask, all I have to do is hit Alt Backspace to fill with my foreground color, and then I've got that set up there. So the next thing I need to do is I need to grab the top portions, which are all basically in this section right here. So I'm gonna grab this tiny cross right here. And because I had it set to do some edge padding, there's some spots where it looks a teeny bit confusing here. And this is where it might be useful to use, um, to either take out the ambient occlusion, toggle that out, or this it would be where you could use the UV templates that are exported out of Max. But I, I don't think it's gonna be too big a, of a deal here. because These are pretty close, but they're not too bad. So, okay, so I'm gonna fill that with black. All right. So after I grab those sections, I'm going to start adding in the screws. So anywhere that there's screws, I'm going to put a lighter color, which is gonna be actually kind of a light gray. So I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna call it screws. I'm gonna change my color to kind of a lighter, lighter gray. I'm gonna fill that, oops. Gotta make sure nothing's selected when you fill that so that it'll fill everything. And then I'm going to make a layer mask and just fill it with black so that it's not showing anywhere. And then I'm gonna grab um, a brush. I'm just gonna use a normal hard-edged brush. So the shift, uh, shift brackets to the right will make it harder edged. And then I'm gonna use the brackets to shrink the size a little bit. And I'm basically just gonna click once on each screw. So yeah, I'm just clicking once with a brush that is basically the size of the shape that I'm trying to make. By the way, in case you're not familiar, um, some good hotkeys to know are holding the space bar, then clicking and dragging, pans across, control plus and minus, expand and uh, contract or zoom. Okay, so over here we have our um, kind of lock here. I'm gonna include that in this. And then there's a couple of screws here. Oops. 
It's a little bit large. I, I sometimes find the pixel grid kind of annoying. So if you want to see that, you can go to show, view, show, pixel grid, and get rid of that so you're not seeing it anymore. Okay, so then um, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna make a new layer, and this layer is going to be um, coin plate. And I think I can actually just drag a marquee. So this is where the coins get fed in. I'm gonna make a layer mask on that really quick. I'm actually just gonna fill this with something that's pretty close to solid white. So now um, I'm gonna go ahead and make my padlock. And I'm going to make two layers for that. I'm gonna make it padlock color one, and then I'm gonna alt drag a copy out. I'll just call that padlock color two. And then I'll select both of these and hit control G to make a group out of them. And I'll call that padlock. And then I'll expand that group. Padlock color one is going to be kind of a blue color for the main body of the padlock. So I'm gonna select that. So I'm gonna make a layer mask for that. And then I'm going to fill it with a good solid blue color. And I had a little bit of a problem here, so I'm just gonna make sure that is not selected by actually kind of selecting the region and just filling it with black so that it doesn't bleed out like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to switch to Padlock Color 2 to remove my selection. And I'm gonna make this color pretty much just white. And then I can make a layer mask, fill it with black. And then I'm gonna use my marquee, or my, um, my polygon lasso rather, to grab the section on the underside of the padlock and then hold down shift plus and I'm going to grab the rest of this. Okay, and then I'm gonna fill that with white. So that'll have kind of a white color there. And now that's the basis of the colors that we need. But we're gonna go in and add a few more specific details. So for example, we need to have a newspaper in the front. You can make your own newspaper. I, I found one on, an, on the internet, so I don't own this. I'm just using this for an example. Um, so I just went ahead and placed it. So file place. I'm gonna scale this down to be roughly the size of the section that I'm placing it in. And then I'm gonna rotate it a little bit, just a bit so that it looks Kind of askew so it is more convincing that it's like a newspaper that was stuck in there and then since i still have my guide layer above this i can just easily drag a marquee going across the area that is supposed to be the actual visible space and then just make a layer mask so that it's only showing up right there and then if i wanted to scale it further but keep this marquee i can unlink the layer to the layer mask and then i could scale this more and not have to worry about it losing its position. It's cordoned off section. So there we go. I think that'll be all right. And then I can click in between again to relink them. And okay, so now we're getting pretty close. So there's just a couple more steps that I wanted to follow, but they're a little bit more complicated just because we're doing a lot of specific stuff. I'm gonna make a logo and I'm gonna write the name of the newspaper in a couple of spots. You can spend some time making a logo if you want to, but I'm actually just gonna cheat since I got this image online. I'm going to place that fake newspaper again, but instead I'm going to just place it where it is at the size that it is. And I'm gonna marquee select the star and then I'm gonna make a layer mask. And then I'm gonna change the layer mode to multiply and that'll get rid of all of the things that are white. Okay. Now I could have done that with the text too, but I wanna have a little bit more control over the text. So I'm actually gonna use the text tool. Oops, and actually I just realized I put, uh, I put the fake noops paper in the padlock layer. So I'm gonna drag that out and I'm gonna do that for both of them. I need a little bit more control over my text. So I'm going to grab the horizontal text tool. I'm gonna to click somewhere around in the middle, right underneath this star. And I'm gonna grab Old English Text MT, and I'm gonna make it 42 size, and I'm gonna make it strong. And I'm gonna start typing. That's gonna be the Daily Star. And then in the text color, I'm gonna select kind of a dark gray that's pretty much the same color 
as what I have for my, uh, my secondary color. So now I can reposition that a little bit. And these are kind of a set now. So I'm gonna grab the Daily Star and the fake newspaper, and I'm gonna control G to make a group, and I'm gonna call this logo left, because it's on the left side. Also, you'll notice the star is not exactly the same color as the text. So I'm gonna select the fake newspaper layer. I'm gonna to go to hue saturation, and then I'm going to hold down the alt key, click between the two to snap it together. And then I can, can adjust things like the lightness to make it look a little bit more cohesive. And you could also fill it with color if you want, but I'm just gonna make it a little bit lighter. So now that I've got that all in logo left, I can actually just click with the logo left group selected. I can alt drag a copy of that to the other side. And I hold, I'm holding down shift to keep it at the right alignment. And then I'm actually gonna need another one of these uh, daily star text sections, but I only need it by itself. So I'm gonna drag a copy by alt dragging the layer which also I need to rename logo right. I'm gonna name this layer Daily Star Front. And then I'm gonna move it so that it's in the lower section of the front of the piece. And then I'm gonna to switch to the text tool. Click into the text, control A to select it all. And I'm gonna change the size until it's something that will fit appropriately. And I think 30 point probably works okay. Now, if it doesn't fit entirely, you can go select the, the text, um, the character selection, which is this uh, folder here, and you can reduce the size of the text, like in the vertical, or increase it, or change it in the horizontal. So I wanna make this like kind of spread out a little bit further. So you can see how that's making it kind of fit the space a little bit better. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit of text on the, the face plate for, or the, the coin plate. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a bit. And I'm gonna make, this text is gonna to have to be pretty small. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab my horizontal type. I'm gonna change my text to six point, but it'll probably need to be smaller than that. I'm gonna change my font to, I don't know, Arial. Arial will probably be fine. And then I'm gonna write quarters only. And since it's writing from the center, I'm gonna move that a little bit. Okay. And so then I'm going to write two lines for the prices. It's gonna be 50 cents daily. And we'll just drag out actually a copy of that. And then just overwrite the text, say $1.50 Sunday. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab both of those, or all three of those, and I'm gonna control G, make them a group. Then I'm gonna call this coin plate text. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the coin plate text all the way down to the logo, and I'm gonna control G to make that a group. I'm gonna call this text slash logos. Okay, well, let's take a look at what that looks like on the model. And that's not really half bad if I say so myself. All right, well, I guess that's it for this tutorial. And thanks for watching. Make sure you check out the rest in the series as well as the other tutorials and videos on UAT's playlists.